Swinburne University of Technology. Hi and welcome to Swinburne Codecasts. I'm Andrew Kane. And I'm Ruben. And in this video, we're going to be looking at dynamic arrays. So far, we've been able to create programs that use variables to store values. And if we wanted to store multiple values of the same sort of information, we could use arrays in order to achieve that. And that's been great and all, but uh, you know, the arrays are always of a fixed size. So it'd be good if we could take those arrays and add or you know, remove values from them when I feel like it. Yeah, well, this is where we can use dynamic arrays. So dynamic arrays allow you to set or change the size of your array as the program executes. And that kind of concept, that's, that's exactly what I'm after because my good friend Jake here. Yep, I know Jake. He, <laughs> he's given, uh, sorry. He, well, he, he hasn't given it to me. He, he loaned me this little program and I can store, you know, he's made it so I can store seven days of temperatures yep. in a row. But it's, it's always seven days. So every time I run it, the, the array, it, the program only allows me to store seven values in the array. Yep. And, um, I remember this too. Yeah, well, <laughs> it looks very but, familiar. While that, you know, the, the issue comes where w what if I want to store maybe less than seven days or if I'm feeling up to it, perhaps even more yeah. than a week of temperatures. Yeah, so this is where we could use dynamic arrays. And the great thing at the moment, the procedures that we've got in here will work with an array of any size. Yeah, so a bigger or smaller array, it doesn't really care how big or small the array is. The only limitation at the moment is the fact that in main, We've just got an array of, as you said, seven values. Yeah. So what we can do is we can create our own dynamic array. And with the dynamic array, effectively what we're doing is not specifying the size of the array. And so what we will have to do is, is get that size when the program starts. Okay. So when the, user, when the user, or when we start the program, we'll ask the user how many values they want to enter. We can store that in the size, and then we can use that to allocate enough space to store that many values in the array. So it wouldn't actually matter what, what size was specified, whether it be three, six, 300. 23,451. Uh, well, there yes, we go. Yes, yeah. et cetera. It won't matter how big the size is. Now, this is getting around one of the limitations with the stack. Now, one thing with the stack is that the variables that we allocate on the stack have to have a fixed size. So they, they have that size and they remain at that size throughout their lifetime. Uh, so what we're doing here is effectively using pointers. So some languages, they sort of hide the pointer stuff for you and others you have to work with pointers directly. But where we've declared the array here, that is just effectively a pointer. And at the start, it points to nothing. Yeah. yeah. When we then allocate space or set the length of the array, then that what that does is create in a special space called the heap in memory, it creates enough room to mm -hmm. store that many values in an array. So they're all, an array just means contiguous block of memory where the bits of data are all next to each other. Yeah. And so this is a big enough chunk to store however many values we want. Cool. We can pass that in just the same as we did previously where we were printing out uh, and populating the, the temperatures. Uh, and now it's just using that, that piece of memory over on the heap, which can be of, of any size. Awesome. What about if, you know, so th this kind of example works where the user specifies how many temperatures they want to store when the program runs. Uh, what if they, you know, s specify that and then they want to perhaps change the size of the array while the program is running? Yeah, so you can add and delete from the array. Yeah. Uh, but maybe what we could do is just, we'll do delete. Add would be very similar and we can talk about the differences uh, and, and leave that as an exercise for the viewer. All right, so what I've got here is a delete temperature procedure. And what it's going to do is take in that dynamic array, uh, which we have to take in uh, by reference so that we can change Modify it, what, yeah. it, what we're actually pointing to there. Yeah. Uh, and we could take in, say, the index that we want to delete. Okay. So we're not going to say I want to delete the number 53, but that I want to delete the value at index 3. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So something like that. Uh, in order to do this, now we've got, if, if we picture the memory as that contiguous block of memory, we might want to delete one of the values out of the middle. Mm -hmm. And we can't actually do that because it's in the middle. Yeah. So what we need to do is move all of the data that's past it in the array, so yeah, further on in the array, mm -hmm. back one position, and then we delete 
effectively delete the last one. Yeah. Now, if we were adding, we would do sort of the same thing, but in reverse. So we would add extra space to the end. Yeah. Uh, and put the value there. Or if we were inserting, you'd add extra space at the end, move everything across, and then put the value in the middle. Yeah. So that's what you're doing here. You're you're reshuffling all the values in the array before you actually resize it. Yeah. So we loop from the index the user wants to the end of the array. Yeah. Uh, one behind the end of the array because no, this is quite a, a funky bit of a, a for loop here. What we're using in the past, we've always used i to represent the index. Here we've got we're using i sort of to represent two positions in the array. We've got the position i, which we're copying the data into, yeah. and we're getting it from i plus one, which is you know, the sort of the next index further along. Yeah. So we can't loop to the end of the array because if I did that, I would assign to the last index the value from the one past the last index, which is by definition not in the array. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that, that, that might actually run which is bad okay it, it should crash but some languages that will run and you'll get very strange behavior and then sometimes it will crash <laughs> and then if you try to run uh, it, it yeah you've got to be really careful with this uh, so here we're going to loop from the index where we're we're going to store well, the one that we're deleting we'll copy each value across to that until we get one part one from the end of the array because there is no one past that and then we set the length of the array to be one less and that effectively drops off that last value from the array cool so do you want to maybe run through this yeah. example execution yeah we can do that so main executes and we dec declare some space for our variables here yeah, and in this case temperature is just a pointer to the array so the array will exist in the future but at the moment it doesn't yeah and then we're going to assign a size to the size variable yep so the user can enter a value how many do you think i um I think four is going to be pretty fitting in this instance. You sure? Is that enough? <laughs> no, four is good. Yeah. And then, okay. <laughs> so after we've got the size, you know, the number of elements that we want in the array, uh, we need to now set aside that much space uh, on the heap to be able to store all four of those values. Yeah. So what we're going to do here where we set the length of the array is allocate enough space to store four integer values. Yeah. And so they'll be contiguous in memory. So there'll be one integer, then it, the next bit of memory is the second integer, then the next bit of memory is the third integer, the next is the fourth. Yeah. So that is our array in memory, which is on the heap. Yep. So after we've allocated the space for the array... Oh, uh, and sorry, we yep. should also mention there that temperature now, of course, points to that allocated space. It's not that we don't just allocate the space, but, but temperature says the space that we've got is that bit of space yeah. in the heap. So we've got to remember those two parts. Yep. Temperature now points to the array, but the array is, is on the heap. Sorry. That's okay. Um, populate temperatures is called and we pass a reference to the array through to that uh, procedure. Yeah. And uh, look, that's going to run uh, four times or the loop inside that's going to run four times once for each element in the array. Yeah, so for each index. Yep. Uh, we read the integer in and store it in each index. And now that's actually because the array here is, is a pointer, we're getting the pointer to that value on the heap as well yep and that is enabling us to, to you know read values into each element of that array yeah and look just just for the sake of it we've got our four temperatures let's say 41 43 45 and 40 so it's pretty hot yep okay yep our array is now being populated uh we're going to call print temperatures and the same thing again we're going to pass that array to that procedure uh, it's going to print those uh, values out that we specified earlier, so 41, 43, 45, and 40 to the terminal. Yeah. So this is, once again, using the array, we can use our index. Uh, so we, we're looping through here for each value in the array. Yep. The index starts at zero, goes to the last value in the array, mm -hmm. uh, and we use that value to access each of those different individual values from the array. Yeah. So we've got temp, which is the whole array. Even though it's on the heap, it's still one array. Yep. Uh, and then we can access each value. So uh, the first time through the loop will be the value at index zero, then the value at index one, the value at index two, the value at index three. Yeah. yeah. And then that finishes. We've printed out all of those values. And then after print temperatures is finished, uh, there's a call to delete temperature. And now this is a pretty, a little bit tricky, this one, the way we put this in. It is, yeah. So what, this actually takes two parameters. So the array itself... Is the first parameter, yeah. yeah. And then the second parameter is the index of the value that we wish to delete from the array. So now this, is, this, is, this will be interesting. 
which of these, notice we've got a, a sort of a second function call here, the read integer function call, in order to get one of the parameter values. So which function is actually going to execute first? Well, because uh, read integer is going to provide the value of the parameter, yeah. that's going to be the first function called. That's right. Yeah. So in order to, it, it doesn't even start thinking about running delete temperatures until it's worked out the values of all of its parameters. Yeah. And so here it has to run read integer first, and it's going to ask the user, which element do you want to delete? Yep. Um, so which one are we going to get them to delete? Let's go with uh, the second element. Yeah, so index one. Yes. At the moment, we don't tell the user that. We yeah, yeah. Probably should update the code. But anyway, <laughs> uh, so they're going to type in one, uh, and one will be returned. And so when we do call delete temperatures, we pass across a reference to our array, mm -hmm. which is all of those values on the heap. And the value one will be passed into the index. Yep. Cool. So this procedure starts executing. We allocate space for the index variable. Yeah. And then, what well, do you want to keep going from there? Well, what we need to do is we don't actually have to uh, iterate through every element in the array. We just need to start from the index that the user has specified because yep. that's the one that we want to remove. Okay. Yep. Now, this this little piece of code here, it's, it's unusual. We haven't actually demonstrated a for loop like this before, but this is going from the value that the user has specified up until the second last index in the array. Yeah, so you can actually loop with arrays. You don't always have to loop or all of the indexes of the array. You can just work with sort of a, a subset, this chunk of the array. And in this case, we're starting at index one and we're going to index two. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's correct. Lucky the array was size four. Hey? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So first of all, we're gonna store the value of index in the variable i. Yep, and, and so the for loop's now gonna check is i less than or equal to uh, the the value that we're checking here, so the la the second last index of yep. the right, so two. Yep. Uh, so i is is, is less yeah. than two or equal to. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we step into the loops body. All right. And so this is where we're going to read. Well, first of all, we we do the right hand side of the assignment. So it's going to read the value of data at index i plus one. Yeah. Yeah. So what's i plus one is? Well, i is one plus one is two. Two. So we read the value of data at index two. Yes. Which is? 45. Yep. And we store that in data at index one. Yeah. So effectively we're overriding 43. Which is the value we want to delete. So yes. it's now gone from the array, except we've got two 45s. Yeah. Yeah. The loop finishes, i increments, uh, i is now two. Yep, which is still less than or equal to two. So it's gonna run again. It is. Uh, as Andrew was saying before, we evaluate that uh, expression on the right-hand side. So, so I plus one is now three. So data at index three is 40. Yep. And okay. we store that at uh, data of index uh, I, which is two. Yep. So we override uh, the value 45 in yeah, the which array. Which is the, now effectively like the duplicate value of 45. Yeah. And we've now got two 40s in the array. Yeah, that's, that's correct. But the good thing is, the second 40 is at the end of the array and we could just forget about that one, yeah? We could. Yeah, that sounds like a plan. <laughs> <laughs> it does. So i is incremented, i is now three, okay? Yeah. So three is not less than or equal to two. Yeah, so we've, we've got to the point where we, we don't want to continue in the array. So mm -hmm. we actually only process sort of those middle two values. Yeah. Now, if we had, uh, say, 200 values in the array and we were deleting still the, the second or third one, uh, it would have just kept looping and repeating that process until it got right to the very end of the array. Yeah. So there that our loop's finished. Um, we can actually remove that last element from the end of the array, so that duplicate uh, 40 yeah. value. Yeah, so effectively we could set the length of the array to be you know, one less than the current length of the array. Yeah, so yeah. our new length would be three. Yeah. Uh, another way to think about that is we could also be, you know, we could reallocate the space. So reallocating means changing the how much space has been allocated to that uh, value on the heap. Yeah. And so we, we're changing it so that instead of having uh, four values, we're now storing enough space for three values. Yeah. Yeah. So changing the length or reallocating. And as you can see, we've effectively removed 43 from the array and our temperatures are now just 41, 45 and 40. Yeah. Excellent. So we've got some additional examples here. Uh, in our program, we handled you know, deleting or removing a value from an array. Uh, this first example um, demonstrates how you could insert uh, an additional 
temperature value into the into the array. Yeah, that we so were this would about before. yeah move everything up or reallocate the space so yep. get one more position. Mm -hmm. Push everything up across one and insert the value where we wanted to. The second example here shows how you could actually take an array and sort the values in the array. Yeah. Uh, so this would be useful for dynamic arrays, but also for well, just standard fixed size arrays. Yep. And the final one we've got is just, it, it finds the maximum uh, integer value in an array of integers. Yeah. So that, that will return the maximum value. Yeah. So some other useful array functions. And that's all we have for dynamic arrays. Uh, dynamic arrays are just like ordinary arrays. However, they live on the heap, which is actually really good because there's much more space on the heap. We can create much larger arrays there, uh, but we can also change the size of the array as the program executes. So if you haven't already, you should check out the video on arrays. And next up, we're going to be looking at abstraction, which covers all the concepts. Yeah, sort of putting them all together in order to create larger, more interesting programs or making better use of the programming resources that we have available to us. Yeah, thanks for watching. Hope to see you again soon. Bye. This has been a Spindle introduction.